Daniel Salatin of Polyface Farms shows us a system where theoretically you could grow thousands of pounds of protein in your garage. Back in the racket house with Daniel. He's saying this is a home run for urban homesteaders. Why? Well, yeah, well, when you think about it, I mean, this building right here is 30 by 50. Yeah. So when you put that in, in context, 30 by 50 is basically three car garage, all right? So when you think about a building that's the size of a three car garage, wow. all right? It's producing uh, 300 chickens. What? Um, there's 300 chickens in here. They're producing um, anywhere from eight to 12 dozen eggs a day, okay? Um, we have the rabbits. It's got uh, 40 does. That's mother rabbits, if you're not aware of that. Um, and all their bunnies, okay? So 40 does. Each doe is producing between um, well over 25, you say between 25 and 30 rabbits each per year. So if you say, let's just say 25, make it easy. That's a thousand rabbits a year, all right? At three pounds a piece, that's yeah. 3,000 pounds of meat protein per year out of a three car garage, 12 dozen eggs a day, all the compost to put on a half acre garden, <laughs> okay? The chickens can eat all the table scraps from and yard waste and leaves and trimmings and whatever from you know we're gonna spitball it. 20 households yeah yeah okay so if you think about the concept of like a 20 household um, subdivision having one of these it's kind of the whole bring a bucket get a dozen yeah, eggs so yeah. every week you bring your bucket of table scraps that would typically go in the landfill or down the um, garbage disposal. That becomes a, a huge percentage of the chicken's food source. You get all the eggs that your family needs, plus you can sell some. If you don't mind eating rabbit, which it's delicious, you know, there's no reason to mind eating rabbit. No. But if you eat rabbit, it produces a large portion of the protein needed for the average family. Um, all the while producing the compost needed for your community garden or your kitchen garden or your vegetable garden in your home, turn your front lawn into garden, you know, blah, 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 wherever you want to put your garden. So every 20 families, that's their food footprint. That's it. That's and incredible. they're employing a full-time farmer to run this one building operation and they could probably tend the gardens and yeah. you know help with the compost. So that's kind of why we feel like you know, that's never been done anywhere. No. But conceptually, yes. it, it's a no-brainer. It's yes. quiet, there's no smell, yes. um, there's, you know, you bring in chicken feed, some rabbit yes. feed. And in the urban setting, you're gonna have, or the suburban setting yes. anyway, you're gonna have this stuff, because people yes. are, in the fall, are throwing away their leaves. Yes, they're throwing like away crazy. their leaves, they're throwing away their, gar <laughs> their yard, I mean, they're gonna be, um, uh, mowing their grass, yeah. they're uh, trimming their hedges, they are putting together their yeah. chips. I mean, again, there would be nothing wrong with this person that's managing this, having a small little chipper, yeah. and everybody just sits their stuff out by the driveway, romp, chip, that, you got inspiring. it. That's inspiring. If you yeah. could somehow get the entire community to commit to giving you the grass, giving yep. you the lace. even they're setting it out, even if they're setting it out for the trucks, you could sure. go around and get it from the back. You yep. know, they ha they've set it out convenient in convenient bags. Yeah. <laughs> you know, hand yeah. anybody can pick up one yep. bag. Sure. It's not like crazy yep. heavy. No. And they can dump it in here. Right. I, I dare somebody, I dare somebody yeah, a community to do would... this. Be the first to do this. <laughs> You're looking at this. It's just this in a garage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. And people, there are people who have three car garage. That's not that uncommon. But there, two car garages are even more common. And that's still a lot of rabbit and a lot of chickens. Yeah. And so, you know, then you've got a constant supply of fresh bunnies. Oh my gosh. Let's see here. There's more. Yeah, this is huge litter, huge, my Cause, gosh. Cause, Cause you know what, they breed like rabbits. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, they're she's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Oh my okay, word. So 
12. So That's, she just had 12. She just had 12 babies. Where's yes. the male? Where's the lucky male? The male, that gets um, passed I'd around. have to check the records, uh, but there, <laughs> there's a lot of males in okay, here, too. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, but the, the females go to the males. The, okay. ma the male has his own place and he hangs out, and the fe okay. female comes to his house. Are these um, males? Uh, the males, um, you really can't tell the difference. Oh, okay, I'll okay. Show you. Okay. Um, so say he's a male. You're gonna bring the female. Here's a male. male. Here's a male. Yeah. And do you just breed all year round? Yep, we breed all year round. Now, what to do with the offspring? Those are just the breeding stock. So they're gonna have babies, and those are gonna end up being what you eat. Here's Joel Salton himself on the hairpins that you could put in just a yard. A yard like this. <laughs> a little tiny yard. So these are what we call the hairpins. So these are for the rabbits. And, um,. So we move these uh, once a day, and these are so light that they don't require a dolly. They just slide. I mean, a you know, a ten-year-old yeah. can move these real easily. The hairpin and the Millennium feather net are probably the two models that we have here that are the the longest evolution. Uh, I mean years, decades, in getting to where we are today. I could tell you stories for a long time about all the, the trial things that we did, but when we, when we finally came to this, uh, it really worked. Well, why did you start with rabbits, and why did you insist on putting them on grass? Well, Daniel, this was Daniel's entrepreneurial project. We're, we're big believers in child entrepreneurship, and uh, so he started with rabbits when he was eight. And um, he, he, you know, my older brother had had rabbits when we were kids. He saw those rabbit shelters hanging up in the rafters of the barn, you know. Ah, I think rabbits would be fun for me. We had, we had some friends that were moving from a, from a, a, a country a country house rental situation to an apartment in the city, and the owner wouldn't let them have animals. So they had to have some place to take their rabbits right when he was eight, and about the time he was starting to get interested, he said, ah, I'll... I'll do rabbits. So that's how we start. And of course, everything here is on grass. Uh, I mean, that, that's just that we're, you know, we're, we're a cult on, on grass. So, uh, the, you know, from the get go, the whole idea was, so how do we run these, you know, on grass? Will they actually mow somebody's lawn? Well, yeah, you can, you can go up here and see where they've been. So we're moving them, you know, we're moving them downhill. And um, so you can see the squares so you can see the squares where they've been. One, two, three, nice. four, okay? They're not mowing it like a mower mower, but 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 they're definitely mowing it, you know. You can walk on it. You can walk, absolutely you can walk on it. It's not a golf course. And it's not like cow pies. Yeah. You know, ra rabbit, rabbit pellets are not like cow pies. It's almost cute. Yeah, it is cute. <laughs> You heard it. He said it. It's, it's like it's like it's like you spread it's, it's like you spread breakfast cereal, you know, right. and that out here. Right on it. It's not burning it like the, no, like the no. corn is cross. That's right. That's right. That. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because the rabbit manure is, is not is uh, not because rabbits pee. How much can they eat from the land? Dan Daniel figures that they're picking up uh, at least seventy percent of their diet on the land. So we figured it up one day just for fun and figured up that one acre of grass put through rabbits is worth about fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. So speaking of dollars, <laughs> what's your input on this thing? What 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 can one of these pens do in by way of cost and by way of uh, Yeah so so yeah so we bring them out at uh, at six weeks they get weaned and then we dress them at twelve. So they're in here for six weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, you know, uh, each rabbit is, is uh, sells for about 25 bucks. Um, they're about eight bucks a pound times three pounds. So for sake of discussion, well, for sake of discussion, we could even just say 20, you know, make it, make it simple. And, um, and so each one's big enough for a litter. And so we can put anywhere from, from you know, two to eight or even 10 if the litter's real big. We, we, we try to put each litter, that's what this is. This is, this is the bunnies. This is the bunnies of number 45. Okay. That way we can select for genetics 
if we want to keep for seed for for breeding stock we can we can track the the litter all the way through to you know to slaughter so so that's how we identify for genetic selection so if you figure six weeks a piece and again you know this is a deal like 24 weeks they can be out here in the summer so uh, 24 divided by six is four rotations if you say the average is six bunnies per rotation that's uh, 24 bunnies 24 bunnies at $20 a piece is $480 per per one of these wow this could be somebody's <laughs> yard absolutely we, we call about a bunny absolutely we call this nook and cranny farming <laughs> this is nook and cranny farming i mean this is cool because all the infrastructure is portable yeah. you can move it from yard to yard yeah, yeah. you 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 could, you could do it in a in a suburbs yeah. why you know with chickens and rabbits you could hook together you know two two three acre suburban backyards yeah and be in the farming business I've heard that rooster. I don't even know how far away that rooster is, but I've heard him like three times. I haven't heard a thing out of these guys. No, they're quiet. That's the beauty of rabbits. They're quiet. They're very, very so, quiet. Culturally, why don't we eat rabbits? Bam Bambi. <laughs> Thumper. <laughs> Peter Rabbit. Dang Disney and they're cute. Yeah, Peter <laughs> Rabbit. Nuts. Yeah, yeah. But there are a lot of cultures that do eat rabbit. I mean, yeah. the, the British culture certainly does. French. Um, yeah, rabbits are eaten well all over the uh, all around. But but yeah, they are kind of they're a little bit like lamb. They're a little bit of an ethnic, ethnic okay. kind of thing. And you got six six rabbits in here. Uh, how many are in here? You One, two, three. There's four, four in here, and they, these were small litters. So a litter can be anywhere from you know three or four, okay. all the way up to ten. Okay. So I mean we've had we've had ten okay. in there. All right. And obviously they would mow more. Okay. Yeah, you know, they would mow more if you had more in there. Yeah, thank you. And if there were less, they would eat more off the land, more of their own food off the land, and less supplement. Yeah. You have some supplement right there. Right. In an automatic feeder under the shed. Mm -hmm. And then your water. Water. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Thank you. I first published this system on the channel and just have been waiting for somebody to do it. Somebody has done it on the small scale, but hey, we forgot the paper inside. One second. All right, I'm back. I'm back. No, I got him. Thank you. Breck offered to hold him. Here it is. This is exciting. Can you guys see that? Boom. It's not a garage, maybe even better. It's like a covered uh, carport. You know I'm into carport farming. Now, you'll need a physical holding for the pigs. You could use something like this, a pig port, where we just converted a carport into a pig port. Took half of it, put them on deep bedding. There you go, that'd be great for piglets. That'd be great just to raise them all the way to the end on. Yeah, I raised two pigs in a carport, and it, it was just fine. Notice, notice on the side of this, uh, ventilation and it doesn't look very expensive it just looks like they might even manufacture that themselves uh, just like storm windows or something now here's the beautiful stuff oh stay with me guys you're on this glass table are you really are you <laughs> I'm talking to Henry. are you really doing exercises in the background no, I was going you to trying to get Henry happy okay so then the, here's the system there's the rabbits in the hutches. They probably built those from Polyface Design or similar. And notice down below, see the chickens down below on deep bedding? That's the key. Here's a better picture maybe of more chickens. Look at all these chickens down there on deep bedding, the rabbits manuring down in there, and then the offspring you run in the grass. Lily's been wanting rabbits. We're going to do it. But the, good job, Lonnie. Uh, he's in our member area. He has done. You, you just crushed it, buddy. Good job, Lonnie. Very proud of you. As far as I know, this is like the first I've been able to see of somebody else doing this on the homestead level. Good job. And if you guys are interested in doing this, I've got a bundle, a free bundle from Joel Salatin. Lots of stuff from him. A master class, uh, some samples from his book, Polyface Design, and a link to his book should you want to buy it. But go ahead and get the free bundle. Uh, I'll leave the link for that down in the description or it's at polyfacedesigns.com. Here, you know, oh, there it is. Did you hear that? So I'm at, I'm at this, uh, we're at Homesteaders America Spring Edition and we have this uh, rental. 
<laughs> but I'm looking at that. Like, really? You can have a couple of rabbit hairpins in here. I don't think there's a garage here. There's not a garage. But you could do a you could do a 10 by 10 tent and have some rabbits. Lily is a nice system. In Joel's new book, he talks about an urban situation where you could have a four by four, four foot by four foot, two chickens underneath, and a, a breeding pair. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. So I'm not above this. I'm gonna take it even smaller scale than that. Uh, Lily will get some rabbits. She'll get to keep the breeders, and then she knows we will eat the offspring. She has no problem with that. So how exciting. Let's get on this journey together. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do check out that link for more free uh, resources and an opportunity to get Joel's book, Polyface Designs.